We're going to keep going. Verse uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 16. It says, now the King James says, the Spirit itself, but it should say the Spirit himself, because we know that the Spirit of God is a him. We know it's a person, right? It's not a thing. It's not an it, okay? We know, okay, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit. Write that down. Here's another work of the Spirit in, in, the, in, the, in the believer is that he will bear witness with your spirit that you are a child of God, right? He will tell you. Listen, if you have to ask other people if you're a child of God, you ain't, right? He will bear witness. He will let you know. And let me tell you, it's important that you have, this is generally called the inner witness, and <clears throat> this is important that you have this inner witness why? Because you're going to have plenty of people around you that tell you you ain't a child of God. Why? Because you don't meet their specifications. But thank God you can meet God's specifications and not meet theirs. Amen? Do you realize Jesus did not meet the specifications of religious people? No matter how good he was. And if he couldn't, guess what? You ain't. And if, if like he said, if they call the master of the house Beelzebub, what are they going to call you? Right? Well, they're going to call you everything but a child of God is what they're going to call you. Okay? Yeah. So you have to realize, <clears throat> you have to have it in yourself to know who you are. Amen? Amen? So don't, now understand, if somebody's pointing out things that you have done wrong and you need to fix or change or change a behavior or change an, an attitude or something, then yes, you ought to listen and you ought to go on. That does not mean that you're not a child of God. A ch being a child of God doesn't mean perfect outwardly. Being a child, and listen carefully, <clears throat> righteous is what you are. If you're born again, if you have given your heart to Christ, in other words, if you've given your life to Christ, if you've made him the Lord of your life, it doesn't mean you're going to do everything perfect all the time. But notice this, if you have made him Lord of your, your life, you are righteous. Now, so that's what you are. Now, holiness is how you live. Do you get that? Righteous is what you are. Holiness is how you live. Now, most people's righteousness is here, but their holiness is here. Now, the Christian life is getting that gap to where there is no gap. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, hopefully, you're moving in that. Well, this one doesn't come down. That one stays there. This one goes up. I was doing this. That ain't the way it works, okay? He's not going to lower the standard of righteousness you're going to have to rise in the standard of holiness. Amen. Does that make sense? Now, understand, whenever you're born again, you are made righteous. And now as you learn, you should grow. And if you stay here, you know, you get, you get born again here, and then you rise to this, and that's where you stay, you're backslid. Do you understand that? It should be a constant growth toward Christ-likeness. Does that make sense? And so there, and everybody has their areas that God's working on them in. Uh, they have areas, hopefully, that they're working on themselves in that God has pointed out. But the main thing is, and I preached not too long ago. I don't know if it's out there on the, in the bookstore or not. If it's not, it's probably online, but you ought to listen to it. It's called Clean Up Your Own Backyard. <clears throat> and uh, basically, it's just saying that before you start worrying about everybody else's backyard, take care of your own backyard. Amen. All right? Now, 